Welcome to the Hair Medic Podcast. These short clips are designed to help you understand your hair loss and scalp problems better. If you have any further questions or wish to get in touch or want more information, log on to hairmedic.co.uk or call 0845 644 9384. This second cast is about debunking some of the myths surrounding hair and hair loss. I'm going to let you into a few trade secrets. Hair and hair loss has lots and lots of products surrounding it, so I'm going to try and uh, untangle some of the facts and the misdirection which surrounds it. It's a big business, so there is a lot of um, um, products that are out there which are, they do tend to stretch the imagination a little bit and stretch what they try and do with the hair. So we'll get on with some of the facts and some of the things that happens to hair. Absolutely not. Hair is a dead appendage. Uh, there's no nerve endings and no blood vessels. So whatever you do to it, it actually doesn't know that it's being cut. It's the same when you color it or perm it or do anything to it. It can always break hair, but it will never send any types of messages down into the bulb saying, help, I'm under attack, or I'm being stimulated, so grow faster or fall out. So whatever you do to your hair, the hair shaft itself, it's always going to stay within the hair shaft. Let me ask you this. If you stop washing your face, will it clean itself? No, it won't. Same thing with hair. It doesn't self-clean itself. The balance of oils may rectify themselves and balance out in time, and it may get better after a very manky start, but it is always best to have a clean, healthy scalp, which means a clean, healthy hair as well. Use a shampoo. You can use a shampoo as often as you want, daily if you need to. There is no law against um, using shampoo more regularly than you need to. So, but just make sure that you do clean it. This is asked lots, usually by people that have just come back from holidays or just about to go on holidays. They want to put some streaks in the hair and they want a DIY way of doing it. Um, lemon juice is an, is an acidic um, property, so it will actually close the cuticles off and not open them out and bleach them. So it'll actually make your hair a little bit more shiny um, slightly over a shorter period of time, but what it won't do is bleach it. Um, it's a bit of an old wives tale. that one. There's an actual grain of truth in that. Um, what is the theoretical uh, part of this is um, coloured hair is more susceptible to um, alopecia, uh, alopecia totalis, where the full head is, is being affected. And uh, severe shocks, i.e. Anne Boleyn, was noted to have her hair turn white overnight. Um, her head was just about to get chopped off, so I suppose that was a little bit stressful for her. Um, so what happens is there is a, a reaction in the scalp. Um, the pigmented hairs actually are affected by the stress and fall out, whereas the white hairs are a little bit more resilient, which means that they will be kept. So, hey presto, peasant turns white overnight, but really what happens is that the dark hair falls out and the white hair stays. That's a really uncomfortable way of getting shiny hair. And in all honesty, I mean, it probably does close the cuticle down a little bit. If the cuticles close down, that means that the hair is more reflective. So that means that light bounces off it, which means it's a little bit more shiny. But after you've towel dry hair and after you've put some, some heat on your hair, if you dry it uh, with a hair dryer, that means that the cuticle opens up again. So you'll have shiny hair once the cold water is on it, but when it's not, it will just turn back into your normal shiny or dull hair, whichever one you had before. So you've just undone all that good work. So really, um, there is no long-term benefit of doing a cold rinse. Hair loss is due to many different types of problems. Um, if you get something off the shelf, you're really shooting in the dark. And for you to be able to pick up um, a product off the shelf, um, take it for a few months and it make a difference, is very, very slim. These types of myths come from something called acute telogen effluvium, which is when their body has 
a shock um, from an external factor, whether it be uh, physical, uh, emotional or psychological. Um, and what happens is a few months later, after the shock, the hair starts to shed, but then the body just um, corrects itself and the hair comes back. But in that space, what happens is a person panics, they go and grab something off the shelf, start taking it, and hey presto, the hair comes back. Is it due to the tablets? No. It's to do with the body just correcting itself. But that's where the myth comes from. The jury's out on this, in all honesty. Um, there is no physical evidence at the moment that laser therapy can grow hair back, but it is theoretically possible. It just, the technology just isn't there yet. So, in my estimation, save your money for a good few years until something better comes along. Because at the moment, I don't think it can help. A full list of clinics and numbers to call can be found at hairmedic.co.uk. So, are we done? Right. Um, hi. Uh, next time we're going to be talking about uh, female hair loss. It's a big subject, um, so if you've got any uh, questions that you want to ask me, then email them over. So, I'll see you next time.